Welcome to the League of Melanated Gentlemen podcast. My name is Spencer, and I'm one of your hosts on this podcast that we do. And today I'm joined by the other two members of the League of Melanated Gentlemen to give you an early review. Yes, sir. This is Brandon. And of course, I am Jordan. Now, before we start reviewing anything, we must tell you where you can find us, communicate with us, talk to us, and tell you how you feel. Tell us how you feel about the things and the stuff, stuff and things. And so Jordan's going to tell you all about those places. Yeah, check us out on social media. We're on Facebook. We are on Twitter. We are on Instagram. We're on YouTube. And we are all at the League of Melanated Gentlemen podcast. That is where you can talk to us, communicate with us, you know, tell us about the good times you're having. Uh, just, you know, hanging around our groups and being a nerd and everything. So that's where you can find us. And then, of course, don't forget to rate and review us on whichever streaming service you use to listen to this wonderful podcast network. Um, and then quick schedule updates. Of course, it's on Mondays we drop the regular podcast. But on Tuesdays, we drop LMG Presents Marvel Multiverse RPG. That is the Marvel Multiplayer role playing game that we have on this podcast network. Um, so yeah, every other Tuesday that one drops. And then of course on Wednesdays, we have wrestling with worldwide Willis as Brandon's wrestling podcast, where he is going through the events and happenings in the world of wrestling. Uh, Brandon, anything going on? We got bad blood in Atlanta, Georgia coming up soon. Um, uh, should be a good one. And ATL. That's and soon. then, and then of course, bi-weekly as well, we have DC Animation with Spencer and Friends at a Spencer's Review Podcast, where he is going through the entire world of DC animated movies. Spencer, what is on the bracket for the bracket? What is on the docket for the movies? Uh, this week, Brandon and I will be discussing Constantine House of Mystery. Spooky. Look at that. Right in time for the spooky season. So yeah, that is everything we have for the podcast. Alrighty. Now, as I'm sure you knew by the title today, we will be reviewing Agatha All Along Season 1, Episodes 1 and 2. Now, of course, we must first run the spoiler warning, and we have wonderful AI for that. So, Libra, if you could please. Excuse me, gentlemen, but there is a strange phenomenon happening. I think it's a spoiler. Proceed with caution. And now with that out of the way... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, we, we forgot. Oh, we have, you're right. a lot of important stuff to happen. It's true. It's it's true. Yes. In television. Uh, I mean, we've already run the spoiler warning, so that applies to uh, what we're about to talk about as well. If you haven't already watched the Emmys or know about the awards that were awarded. And so I know nothing. I don't know who won anything. Uh, Jordan is going to tell us all about it. Yeah. So, you know, I like to give people their kudos where it happens and so we're going to talk about some of the winners and talk about a couple of the um the different category winners so just to go and get going uh outstanding comedy series uh, a show named hacks one you guys know that show Mm-mm. i'm familiar with it um but i haven't watched it i went up against abbott elementary and the bear which i thought was some of the bigger ones for this year uh reservation dogs as well Abbott cleaned up last year, so I guess I couldn't get two in a row. Can't win them yeah. all. Um, we have the Outsending Drama Series. Now, the winner of this one we've talked about in this show cleaned up, let me tell you. So the winner of Outstanding Drama is Shogun. Sure. Went up against shows like Fallout, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, uh, and The Gilded Age were some some pretty big shows, but Shogun, oh my goodness. We, we reviewed that one. Such an amazing series. Yep. Uh, also, outstanding lead actor in a drama series. Our boy Scorpion won this one. Uh, again, that's number two for Shogun, if you keep in count. Also, he went up against Idris Elba from uh, against a show called Hijack, which I actually watched on Apple. Donald Glover, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and then Walton Gog- uh, Goggins from Fallout. So, some pretty. Good, I think it's a pretty good competition right there. Yeah. Outstanding lead actress in drama series Shogun won yet again. Anna Siwa, uh, we also know her as Mariko from, from from there from Shogun. Man. 
So that was one of the best acting jobs I've seen, man, woman, otherwise. I, yeah, a up, across the board. Yeah, like yeah. Michael was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Like, uh, top tier, top tier work. I, I cannot say enough even... positive things about her performance in Shogun. Facts. And if I, apparently, like, she didn't know Japanese. So she had to learn that. You Which was I mean? crazy. On I think I talked about it when we reviewed it. It's like, I saw her in Godzilla, the TV show, and I was like, yo, I didn't even. Like she's speaking a whole other language. I didn't know she knew another language. Yeah, to learn it and then act it so well is crazy. I yeah. am surprised. Uh, uh, spoiler, but my boy uh, didn't win. White boy. Oh yeah, Can you be a little more specific. Oh, uh, Blackburn, Blackburn, Black, Black, Black Thorn. Yeah, Black. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, my boy didn't get no supporting yeah. actor or anything. What is his real name? Because he some weird. Okay, because they have outstanding supporting actors, and I mean, I don't know if this is he didn't, Shogun didn't win this category, but his name is Tadan Todenobu Asano? No. No, this dude is I forgot his name. It's weird, though. I remember that. Okay. I'll look it up. But, yeah, yeah so he's Portuguese or something, right? right yeah. I mean, he's, he's something. Cosmo Jarvis. Cosmo, that's his name. Oh yeah, yeah I don't even. He didn't. He didn't even throne. know her. Yeah, the fact that he didn't get a, a nomination is wild to me. Yeah, no nomination. Um, another show with the big winners, um, the morning show. I mean, not the morning. Sorry, the Crown. The Crown won a couple of things on here as well. Um, and then the show Hacks got a couple wins to outstanding lead actress in a comedy series Hacks. Um. It's called for... Hacks. Yeah. To... Okay. I need to look this up. Because I, I guess it's I on HBO. Heard it. Okay. Interesting. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Uh, Gene Smart. Yeah. That one pretty much cleaned up all of the comedy series uh, categories. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, also, Outstanding Writing for a Drama Series. Uh, Slow Horses by Will Smith. I don't even know what that show is. I have no idea what that is. And not the horses. No, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Shogun also won outstanding directing from a drama series. Um, like it should have. Sorry. Yeah, I think there's at least five different categories that they won. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of highlight that a couple of them. Um, Shogun, great first season, excellent first season, I will say, and it deserved to win as it did question um do the emmys have an animated category i didn't see one no because shout out to x-men 97 is all i'm saying yeah i i don't even know what other show what other animated show would have been even on there i mean i'm sure that was some, some great stuff is just i don't i wonder if it's a separate thing uh, maybe so uh, it says uh Shogun this- had the most nominations of any show, so it had 25 nominations, and it actually won 18 of them. So I'm thinking this Emmys is for primetime shows. I think there's a different one for like daytime, a daytime Emmys. Emmys. Yeah. yeah, I think that. But it's, I think it's daytime Emmys is usually for like, I guess, morning shows and stuff. But I don't know what the separation is, because whenever you have streaming, how do you decide which Emmy it goes to? Because you can stream literally whenever. Yeah, and and I know they they just created a um, one for like younger television because like um, a couple other shows that I've talked about before won Emmy. So I'm wondering if they're breaking it out, but I'm not sure. That's a good question. Yeah, I guess since TV is a 24 hour cycle, uh, yeah. th- there have to be you know multiple shows or right. uh, award ceremonies. Yeah, so I, I just went to the Emmy's actual website. So the categories, comma, dramedy, limited series, reality, short form. I do see animation, actually. Uh, yeah. They got animated program or individual achievement in animation. Look like uh, Blue Eye Samurai one. Outstanding. Uh, and I'm mad about that. Like that, was, that, yeah. sh- that show was really good. Uh, X-Men 97 was nominated. Uh, yeah. nominated. Yeah. Scavenger's Reign. Wow, Simpsons. The Simpsons. Oh, yeah, interesting. But Blue Eye Samurai was really good. Yeah, agreed. And uh, oh yeah, I don't know. Yeah, 
And then I got a bunch of like the other random ones that, I mean, I'm sure people care about them, but I mean, I don't care about best lighting, best picture editors, best sound, you know, best commercial, like what? <laughs> But yeah, but shout out to Shogun. As yeah. we all knew, that thing was a masterpiece. Yep. And uh, with the presidential election going on, I'm sure Saturday Night Live will have some Emmys coming up. <laughs> yeah. They actually have a movie coming out, apparently. Uh, I just saw a preview for I was I went to the movies this past week and saw a preview about kind of when SNL started. Okay. So it, it looks pretty interesting. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, now into the to the meat of the episode, we do have a review for you. And so Agatha all along, you know, gonna be honest. Probably not getting any awards. But that's okay. <laughs> we will talk about the two episodes that have been released that are out and that I'm sure you have already watched. And we'll talk about them individually. So I will read a synopsis in my own words for the first episode. We will discuss it. Then I will read a synopsis in my own words for the second episode. And we will discuss it. So, episode one. Seeketh thou the road. We open with Agnes coming off of a suspension, making her way to a crime scene. There's a dead body in a forest, and she's the only one who can investigate this, so she's called in to investigate. Agnes's investigation takes her to the library. She is told by a mysterious stranger that there was a fire, and she makes her way back to the precinct. After learning more details about the body, Agnes is introduced to Agent Vidal, with whom she is, you know, not looking forward to working with on this. They have a very tense conversation, and Agnes kicks her out of her office. Agnes continues investigating into the night until the chief makes her go home. At home, she is visited by Agent Vidal, and while they are discussing the case uh, and their personal situation... Mm -hmm. Agnes hears a noise upstairs and finds someone rummaging through her things. She gives chase and ends up catching and arresting him thanks to a driver hitting him. While interrogating him, things start to get weird, and to make sure she isn't crazy, uh, she takes a trip to the morgue. Agent Vidal tells her that she is trapped in a spell and, you know, she peels herself out of it. She wakes up naked, pissed off, and in her right mind, and she finds that the person she arrested is tied up in her house. And then she is attacked by Vidal. She is able to convince Vidal to let her live, and Vidal tells her that she is sending the Salem Seven. And that's the first episode. Nice. I've... I try to keep these not like for shows. I try to keep it tight. Yeah. Um, doesn't always happen, but you know those are the high points. So, Jordan, what did you think of this first episode? I actually really enjoyed this first episode. I had no expectations for the show. I had no idea what the show was even going to be about. I did not expect it to be, in my opinion, as good as it was. I had thoroughly had a good time. Um. I think the acting from um I mean what I don't even know her real name. Um I think she Catherine did it. I think she, yeah. I think she did a really good job of kind of bringing us back into this world of, you know, Westview and also they made it interesting by, you know, starting the episode off like like she's a regular like beat police or something like I was a detective. Like yeah. I was like, wow, like what are we doing? Like what's going on here? And then with the twist at the end I was like, ah, okay. I see what's going on. Yeah. Even the little shout out to Wanda on that first episode. So, okay. yeah, I really enjoyed it, though. Brandon, what'd you think? I enjoyed it as well. I also didn't have really any expectations. We all know Marvel television isn't the greatest. Um, so I sort of, and I hadn't watched WandaVision in a while. So I kind of was interested how they were going to pick it up and kind of still merge both worlds together, but also make kind of build Agatha to be her own character. Because um, honestly, I was like, why is this character getting a show? But um, I thought it got off to a good start. I thought, like you said, the performance was great from the actress. 
she was really good and uh she brought you into it and she looked like a downtrodden detective who was struggling you know what i mean but yeah but uh but no i enjoyed it it was pretty good okay okay um i did predict that there would be some kind of tv homage uh in here just because uh, WandaVision, you know, starts out with them like going through time and sitcoms. Yeah. So I assumed that they were going to do something to that same effect, and mm-hmm. they did with the whole like, uh, like cop show trope. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I assume there won't be any more of that, but I I assumed that that was going to be a thing, uh, in some form. Yeah. But uh, I also had a pretty good time um i would agree katherine hahn's performance is really good yeah uh because she is and i mean i knew that from uh wandavision because whenever she was you know quote unquote in character as the neighbor and then whenever she was agatha yeah there was a like so she's doing a really good job of different differentiating herself depending on who she's playing at the time right and that can be very hard to do. We have seen that not go great whenever one actor or actress has to play multiple people in the same show. Thanks. And yeah. she is doing a wonderful job, in my opinion. Yeah. So, um, you know, we open with her driving and she makes her way to a crime scene. And it's a situation where, you know, she was, we find out that she was suspended, I guess, for hitting somebody, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> she punched and, him or something or something. Like yeah, that. or something. And um, so, yeah, she punches somebody. We don't see any of that happen, but she's pulled off suspension because she's the only one who can solve this crime that has happened. What? And, oh, good. I was going to say, the body, like, do we. Do we think she know what's actually going on? Like she, at some points, it seems like she kind of remembered what's going on, and at other points, it's like she don't know what's going on. Like I was kind of confused on right there. I think that was the point. I think yeah. that she, because it is said that she's trapped in a broken spell because mm-hmm. whenever Wanda dies, quote unquote, in Doctor Strange two, then you know that that's kind of where. I assume because that's one of the questions that I had is, okay, what happens to Agatha if Wanda is in fact dead? Yeah. And so I think that that they, they address that kind of, but Wanda, I mean, and we, you know, are pretty sure that that's whose body that is. Yeah. But oh, okay. Okay. Oh yeah. That makes sense. I'm tripping off. Wait, but was the body actually there? Because remember she goes and like tries to show Oh boy, the pictures and it's like there's nobody there. It was flowers. Yeah, I I don't know because because when they were like when she was standing over the body, she sort of got like uncomfortable and started like you know what I mean. So I'm wondering if that was like the spell partially breaking a little bit and then you know what I mean. I don't know, but it's a like, lot to interpret. There. I I took it to kind of mean that. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Because the whole, like, it's been three years thing is the thing I'm not sure about. Yeah. Uh, Because at first, I took it to mean, okay, Wanda is dead, and her appearing in front of you like this is, like, the first step in getting Agatha out of the spell. Because Mm -hmm. Wanda never, like, released it. Wanda just kind of died. Yeah. And so Agatha is going to have to be pulled out of it by right. somebody. Um, and so, yeah, I, I took this to mean like, oh, that's that's the first step to breaking her out of it was showing uh, Wanda's dead body. Yeah, I can see that. But then was she actually there, though? Because in the pictures, there was nothing there but flowers. I mean, I think at that time she was sort of having a because like even when she looked at the walls. You know yeah, I mean? it was like that wasn't she wasn't actually in a police precinct. She was like right. actually at her house. Right. Yeah. And and that's the thing. Like she went to the morgue and saw a body and you know, saw the library card and you know all that. So yeah, there's 
there's no way to know what's real and what isn't because we saw her, you know, go through all of the years of character uh, she was to, you know, again, peel herself out of the spell. But let's assume that the body wasn't really there. So then it was it was only there for her. I'd be having a question because like in the episode, we also see that she goes to the library and things are burned and like that mysterious dude is just like looking at her. Like, I assume we still got to wait for a little bit to see what's going on with that. Did y'all understand what was going on right there? I'm a, I'm going to assume there's going to be some stuff happening with certain characters that these characters don't mean anything. It's just part of the spell. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like, that's just the effect of the spell is, is certain people are going to be used to communicate to her. You know what I mean? Certain things. While so I, wonder what, I wonder what the fire was then. Because the uh, another thing that, you know, is unclear is... So she saw, whenever she was in detective mode, she saw her neighbors as people involved with it. Yeah. And so were they, like, knowingly playing along with her? Or did she kind of imagine a lot of that in her head? Yeah. I thought she imagined a lot of it in her head. like, But because those people were familiar, that's why those were the people that were... And the only person that wasn't familiar was that dude who was looking in the library. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what's she, what's the book? What's the book called? Again? The Dark Hole. Dark Hole. Okay. All right. Yeah. And she started to figure that out, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So she sees the dead body in the forest. She's calling to investigate, and uh, she uh, makes her way to the library. Mm -hmm. And whenever she gets there, you know, she has a library card with dates on it, but no names. And so that's when you know she goes back to the section. There was a fire. Everything was destroyed. Okay, because we, we can't have her finding out too much. Right. Gotta, gotta leave some mystery. Yeah. And so, yeah, we don't know who that stranger was. At least I don't know who that stranger was. And then, oh, man. And then we also, I guess I got, I got, I'll be, I guess I had a lot of questions. But I, I mean, I assume I'm still gonna have to watch the show to figure out oh, what's yeah. going on. But it's like she had that pendant with that lock of hair in it. Yes. That was weird. Yeah. I wonder what's that. And and was that, I thought that was what old boy was trying to steal. We still don't know his name, which that was a pretty cool thing. She was like, she was talking to him and she was like, what's your name? And like, he's like sitting there talking, but she can't hear anything he's saying. And she's like, interesting. We're going to talk, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. We're going to talk about yeah. that in episode two. Yeah. Um, and so goes back to the precinct uh the chief tells her more about the body and then agent vidal walks in and you know she just is not happy to see her yep uh like clearly there's some history there clearly y'all know each other yeah a lot of sexual tension there oh yeah there's yeah, some yeah, there, yeah, there's some wrong, history there yeah, no you yeah. weren't no they yeah no there was <laughs> yeah. i didn't get that feeling really yeah, I didn't get that feeling. Yeah, they no, knew I, each other I absolutely got yes. That is, yeah. I felt that same way. Like, oh, y'all know each other. Yeah, licked her hand. Yeah, bro, come on. Yeah, they know okay. each other biblically. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I must have missed it. You said she looked. I'd hand. be. That was later. Um, oh, I mean, it was episode one, but yeah, it was yeah, later in episode one. I I would be shocked if, because yeah, again, the moment she walked in, I was like, oh, y'all are exes. That, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, really? What are you doing here? Yeah, like that. Yeah, classic. They, classic. You two cops on the same beat, and they they messed around and they had a bad fallout, and now they got to work together. Yeah, and then she's like, "Oh, oh, they called the FBI in." Yeah, like, the feds. Yeah. So okay, but yeah. So yeah, they 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 there was some tension there, and it was yeah. it was sexual in nature. Yeah. Um. And so uh, she's continuing to work on it. And she's, again, starting to put the dark hold together. Mm -hmm. And Chief comes in and is like, hey, go home. Yep. You're doing too much. So she goes home. And, of course, Agent Vidal show up and is basically like, hey, I'm not here to talk about the case. Right. And, and, and again, that was a, oh, 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 okay. It is funny that she's like, oh, I forgot. You're still doing this, huh? Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's like annoyed with the whole thing that she has to play along with it. And she made a joke. Um, she was like, you can't be a female cop 
and mentally stable. Like that's not allowed. Yeah, I was like that's funny. <laughs> that's true. That is. I was thinking of Punisher, where the lady was a detective and she was just str- like struggling mentally. Yeah, yeah, oh, and that's okay. the thing. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Trope, trope wise, yeah, you can't be just mentally stable and a female detective. Yeah, like that's that's not a, that's not allowed. Like th- that's <laughs> she was right, right. And so that was funny. Yeah, but um. So, you know, they're discussing the case and Adrian Vidal is like, so what's, 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 what's all this? Like, what, yeah. do you even know why you don't like me? And yeah. she was like, actually, no, I don't. Yeah. Huh. What was the evidence thing? She was like, are you, what did she say? Something with evidence. Are you withholding evidence or something like that? I was like, oh, what I know what you're talking mean? about, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't know what that meant either. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I didn't know what that meant, but yeah, that was very interesting. That whole conversation was interesting. Yeah. And so she hears a noise upstairs and she finds, you know, a stranger trying to quote unquote rob her. Yeah. And so she immediately gives chase. Yeah. And like, she's clearly not going to be able to catch this person. Yeah, that boy's booking it. Luckily... Uh, gets hit by a car, uh, <laughs> by the lovely neighbor. Yeah, and she's kind of like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't see him." And Agnes is like, "Get back in your house, I got it." <laughs> yeah. So, you know, does the arrest and um interrogate Sim, and you know he is eventually again shit gets real weird. Like this is weird. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, she's like, explain this dead body, and he's like, "What are you talking about? These flowers? These are flowers." Yeah, and then she's like, "Oh shit!" Uh, and then she looks at the the two way mirror and is like, "Why are you looking at that photograph? Or that, <laughs> that that portrait?" Yeah, and then turns to a portrait, and then he just starts speaking Latin. Yeah, uh, you know. Doing that that demon talk or whatever, <laughs> I rebuke it. Uh, and, it was funny when she knocked him over in the chair. Dude, she kicked the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, she did. Like in my, my head cannon was like that wasn't planned out. She's like ad libbed that and just kicked yeah. the shit out of him. That's that's my head cannon for that one. Yeah, and it's so funny because she kept looking at the glass, and that usually you can't see to the other side of that glass. Yeah, you can. Like in an actual. Uh, interrogation room like it's a mirror on that side but right. the people on the outside can see in so yeah. the fact that she was just looking at Agent Vidal I was like okay yeah but she's like okay I have to make sure I'm not a crazy person because all the shit that I thought was isn't right so let me go ahead and go to the morgue and then when she gets to the morgue, she looks at the library card and sees a name appear. Wanda W. Maximoff. W. Maximoff. And then another name appears. I got that. The Hawkness shows up. And then... Uh, Just start stripping. A- yeah. Agent Vidal <laughs> is there and is like, you have been trapped in this broken spell and you're going to have to peel yourself out of it. Yeah. And so she starts peeling herself out of it, <laughs> layer by layer. Yep. And speaking of that, um, I, I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound like it's for the wrong reason, but I'm glad she ended up naked because that made the whole peeling thing make sense. Uh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Like that's th- that uh, th- the fact that she had to strip off all of the layers of uh, spell, like. Yeah, all the layers of what's not real. Like, she had to right. peel all of it off because yeah. she went through every single costume, even when she was in black and white, and the rest yep. of the room wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, like, I'm I'm glad. Like, that was... I felt like that was a good storytelling device. I realize, I just realized, too, the page is the page from the Dark Old. Like, because it has Agatha, Har- Agatha Harkness' name first because she had it before Wanda. Yeah, that's Wanda why it was. Gotcha. I feel that's so why it's set up as a library card with dates on it. And and Wanda's was the last name because she was the last person to have it. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Okay, 
I didn't I didn't think about that till just now. I didn't either. To be honest. And I think that's why we don't have any previous names. Because exactly. we don't really need that. But um That would have been a cool little Easter egg though. If they throw, yeah. throw a couple names on there. Yeah, throw a couple couple sorcerers or something out there. Yeah. Because no, that would be cool. We don't know how long Agatha had it. Yeah. Either. Exactly. You could have put a like a the ancient one. Yeah, Dark Voodoo. Strange. Yeah, could, oh, that would have been a hell of an Easter egg. Yeah, Doctor Voodoo. They'd have been like, oh, who's that? That, that would have been like... a hell of an Easter egg. Yeah, and they still got time. So yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, we don't know if they got time yet because I mean, just oh, in the, oh, like I mean, oh, just, just to add the name before. Yeah, they got a name to, for other Easter eggs. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah. You're yeah. right. Yeah. So she wakes up and she's naked and she's furious and she's herself. Yeah. So she goes outside uh, to the neighbor, and the neighbor's like, oh, what the fuck, you're naked. <laughs> that was such a real reaction. Yeah, and he was like, or I'm sorry, she was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like, she was so mad. Yeah. And rightfully so. And so he's just kind of, like, gently explaining to her what's going been, on. I would have been looking. I and, she, to... and she was like, how <laughs> long have I been trapped in this hellscape? He's like, three years, about? And yeah, she was not okay. Now, so with the three years thing, um, I I don't know what the time is between Wanda putting her under and leaving and then dying. And so I don't know if three years is the total amount of time she's been under this spell or if it's been three years since Wanda died. I assume she's been under it for three years. And so everything like she was just living this life from the moment Wanda put her under and left up to the point where she died in Dr. Strange too. Yeah. That's all I, I was trying to think like, well, what is the gap between well, one division and Dr. Strange too? Te- well, technically isn't the MCU only like a year or two ahead of us. So now I, just, I think so. I feel like well, the MCU is in 2025. Well, that's what I was going to say. I looked up when the Doctor Strange released and it was 2022. So if they are like three or three or if they're a year ahead of us, three years makes sense. Like, because she mm-hmm. died in, you know, Doctor Strange and for her to be trapped in that, like, that makes sense. Three years. So, but that's the thing. Like, I don't know what year it was in WandaVision. I think it was, it had to be at least 2022. Or Man, but the show came out. The show came out in 2020. The WandaVision show? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, because I thought that WandaVision took place in 2018 because that was her responding to Vision dying. I, I or, don't think so. Or, is, or does WandaVision take place after Endgame? After. Because I, I thought that her whole, like, I thought the reason she did that was because Vision's dead and she released chaos magic through her grief. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, so, so 2020. But there was a sort of five year jump. So I just, it says Endgame begins shortly after Infinity War, which ends in 2023 after the five year jump. Okay, yeah, so one division is 2023 then. Yeah, I think they're way ahead of us, to be honest. I think they're a couple, like, Almost three years, three to four years ahead of us. Because I remember in in game, like they was like almost in the twenty twenties. You know what I mean? They came out what twenty eighteen. Yeah, because I it, in in game, yeah, they were really far ahead of us. And then, yeah. uh, you know, they just kept putting stuff out, and then they slowed down putting stuff out. And so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, they yeah they have to be at least three to four years ahead of us in real life. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so then would it be safe to say that Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness took place in 2026? So yeah. WandaVision takes place in 2023, specifically about three to four weeks after the finale of Endgame. Okay. It what says, about Doctor yeah. Strange 2? So that means that Agatha... That means that it's at least 2026 because... If WandaVision is in 2023 and we know for a fact that there have been at least three years, that means that at a minimum, Agatha all along is 2026. 
So Doctor Strange, uh, the multiverse. Because also it's set after Spider Man on the timeline one year after Endgame, so twenty twenty four. One year passes between Wandavision and Doctor Strange. Okay, so that means Wanda's been dead for two years by the time Agatha starts to break this spell. Which the only reason she's able to break it is because uh the young boy was doing research and went and found her and all that. So. My next question would be, how long did she hold that city hostage? That's a good question. I feel like it wasn't that long. I feel like it was a matter of months, though. Cause she like, yeah, she went to the city, uh, Westview, um, and then like accidentally took it over, and and but she had a hold of it for a, for a pretty good while. I feel like. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you guys said this already, but just I looked it up. Uh, Agatha, Agatha all along is set in either late 2026 or early 2027. Ooh, that tracks. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Oh. So if Doctor Strange happened in 2024, then... So, also one thing more thing to add is, so it, said, it looks like it says Wanda had the uh, Westview under her control for nine days. Oh, okay. Oh. That's, not, that's not terrible. And the, the what one division was what nine episodes, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. That's that's not terrible at all. Yeah, nine to ten days it looks like. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad those people didn't have to go through that for. I was thinking of that. I was like, I I, I guess I assume they took years off their life, off their lives or something. I assumed it was months at least because like the you know the people outside of the bubble had set up shop and they had been doing research and yeah Monica had had to go in and yeah like I, I i just felt like it had been longer than that yeah i agree but cool that clears up the timeline issue mm -hmm. uh at least for now right hopefully we'll see if it actually clears up the timeline issue. wait so Brennan, you said this show is currently taking place like in 2026 early 2027 yeah okay yeah she finds out that she's been in the situation for three years. And yep. uh, so, and then she starts seeing her neighbors and starts realizing like, oh shit, uh, you know, I've been trapped in this nonsense. She's yeah. like, so that means oh girl, Videl is real. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so she goes into her house and uh, Vidal shows up mad this time yep like she she come in with the blades and so she first finds the boy tied up mm -hmm. and i'm sure that's confusing as hell yeah because when she saw him she was like oh shit he's real yeah that's true and yeah then the doll shows up she gets attacked they fight um and they also you know have some conversation and Agatha's pretty much like, you don't, you don't want me in this weak, like magicless state. Like, mm -hmm. do you, huh? this isn't even worth your time. I know. I was so annoyed when they did that. I'm be honest with you. I was like, bro, don't let her get her power back. Cause she gone. I know she not going to murk her, but I'm like, she get her power back in real life. She would just murk her. It's going to be an issue. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. like, don't let, don't even let her get her powers back. Just go ahead. And, but she's like, you can't kill me. I can't kill you. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they they have the whole conversation of like, don't you want me at my best? Yeah, I'm like no, yeah, I was like, <laughs> no, yeah. Sor when sorcery is involved, no thanks, nope. Yeah, no, anything, no. yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. No, I'm gonna have to take you off the board. Yeah. And so, one of the things I wonder is, was Vidal there? Like, why was? Why was she there? Like, was she there just to like torture her and play I think with so. her? Yeah, because she didn't really attempt to break her out. But once Agatha was about to break out, she was the one who said, you "That are you 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 are in the spell." So go ahead and bust that. Yeah. That's what I'll be honest. I enjoyed the show. However, it was extremely confusing. It, it gave me Moon Knight vibes. I'm okay was like, with being confused this early. No, I agree. I agree, but it's just kind of like, and I, you know me, like I'll, I'll roll with it. I'm not trying to do a deep dive investigation, but it was sort of like, why is she helping her? But I guess we'll see down the line. 
Yeah, or was she helping her? Like, what? I don't, I don't yeah. understand the dynamic of their relationship yet, and that's probably yeah. on purpose, right? Like it because it. For all we know, Vidal is a part of her like coven from back in the day. Mm, yeah. Um, because Agatha strikes me as somebody who you know could be a part of a coven and then betrayed everybody, and you know uh, got corrupted by power, and you know just started like some Constantine shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where like she has made enemies <laughs> just through existing, and because that's I mean that's what the Darkhold does. The Darkhold essentially turns you into the worst version of yourself. Yeah. And if she had it for Lord knows how long, and, you know, her goal was to steal Wanda's power. Um, but also, she was teaching shit to Wanda, and yeah. explaining how things were, and, you know, villain monologuing. Yeah. Sure. And so, th that's what I'm wondering, is what her relationship is with um, Vidal. Because I would assume that they were at one point, I mean, it looks like they were romantically involved. But I would assume they were a part of the same coven at in some capacity, and that the dark hold is the reason they fell out. I could see that. Uh could because of that. Agatha's lust for power or whatever. Or, you know, she left Vidal hanging. I don't know. We'll find out, I'm sure. I'm sure there will be some flashback. Yeah. We'll get some more exposition, I'm sure. Yeah. So Anyway, she convinces Vidal to like leave her alone, and Vidal is like, "Okay, it's fine. I will leave you alone, but I will be announcing where you can be found." <laughs> right. And so, yeah, the Salem Seven they they go they gonna come get you. Mm -hmm. That sounds scary. Yes, it does. And when they showed up, we're gonna talk about it. Yeah. So, um. We we liked the first episode. We think it was pretty good. Um, again, walked in with no real expectations. So far, better than Secret Wars. Oh, oh one hundred percent agree. <laughs> hundred percent. They've already cleared that 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 low base. hole. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So at least there's that because that was the bar for me. Was am I enjoying this more than I enjoyed Secret Wars? Uh, yeah. If the answer is no, I can't guarantee I'm gonna power through it <laughs> don't put yourself through that man. I but agree. so far uh it is yeah so cool so anything else on that first episode no i think we good okay so the second episode uh we have circle sown with fate slash unlock thy hidden gate we open with Agatha preparing to leave the house when the boy that she has tied up asks her to take him to Witch's Road. He has been studying Agatha, and he is the one that broke her out of the spell. He wants to go to Witch's Road because the thing he lacks is power. She tells the boy that they need a coven in order to access the road, so they go look for a coven. Uh, they go see a medium, and after a reading, she and Agatha have a real conversation about the road, and she ends up giving Agatha some other names of people that may join the coven. She then goes to see Jen, and Jen is very uninterested as well. The boy is able to convince Jen to join, and they then go to the mall to find a fourth. Uh, they get her fired and ask her to join, and she refuses. They head back to the house, and luckily, everyone shows up, but they are still missing an Earth Witch. It looks like there was one more name on the list that was represented by a black heart. Agatha goes across the street to get Sharon, and they begin to sing the song to open the door. During the song, the Salem Seven show up, and after the song, nothing happens. She then starts throwing insults, and a door appears. They open the door, and everyone heads down the stairs to avoid the seven upstairs. They find the road, take off their shoes, and get to stepping. That's the second episode. So that was a freaky episode too, boy. Oh yeah. Um, I think that while they were singing, my wife started praying. 
<laughs> like, like during the song, she she went ahead and was like, I'm gonna go ahead and bless the house real quick. <laughs> I think I, I heard her over there saying something. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was trying to lock into the show, but uh I I did hear her over there yeah, rebuke it doing something. So yeah. safe to assume that's what was happening. Um Jordan, what do we think about episode two? Yeah, I enjoyed that one too. as much as it, was, it got a little dark there for a minute. I ain't gonna lie, I was like a little, little creepy a little bit, but I had to I always keep in mind, I'm like, hey, this is a Marvel TV show, comic book. I was like, I'm good because if not, I'm like, yo, I might have to turn this off. Uh, but I enjoyed episode two as well. Um, it was pretty funny. I liked the the new witches they kind of introduced, especially the one girl who was like the medium. She's like, oh yeah, he buried the gold in the back of the in the back of the room, and it, she looked <laughs> like a fake, and she's like. Now nah, I know who you is. Don't play. So yeah. like I, I enjoyed that too. Just seeing them gather all of them. Um, even the part where they're in the car, they're trying to figure out the young boys tell them about his background, like where he's from, and like she just cannot hear anything. And now I'm like, I'm super curious to see who he is. And I think yeah. I got spoiled by the internet, which I hate the internet sometimes. I think I got <laughs> spoiled on who he is, but I hope it's not who I think it is. But mm, okay. yeah, I enjoyed the second episode though. Brandon, what'd you think? Man, I thought it was good. I thought it feels like the show kind of knows what it wants to be. You know, like some of these MCU shows, it kind of feels like they're just kind of just existing. It doesn't feel different. Where this show is definitely different. It has its own lane. Uh, like you said, it's creepy. It's dark. Um, and which, I mean, if you're going to do Agatha all along, like it definitely need to get in that magic bag and uh, really lean into it all the way, which feels like they're doing. The show kind of so reminds far. me of American Horror Story too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted. Like, I wanted, uh, oh, I wanted some witch shit because yeah. I figured this show is either going to go. Th there are three directions the show's going to go. Um, it's either going to go like Sabrina the Teenage Witch with a uh, Melissa Joan Hart and yeah. be very like comedy with like sprinkles of magic. Magic, yeah. It's going to go the charmed direction and like try to take itself really seriously, but not really have anything threatening. Yeah. Like n nothing too serious. Or it's going to go the direction of American Horror Story and like act, have some, some, some real shit in there that makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely went that route. Yeah. Cause at least so far. After the first episode, I was like, okay, we're looking a little charmed ish. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as that. like direction, but after this episode, I was like, okay, we're 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 leaning into the American Horror Story because yeah. that's that's what I was hoping for. Um, because I was like, if we gonna do it, let's 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 do it. God damn it! Yeah, I agree. Now, now that they and I feel like they got less restraints. Like Disney Plus started out, like I feel like they had more restraints. Where now it's like, oh, okay, we can get busy. Yeah, I just, agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah I feel that way. Once they started putting the uh, the Fox movies on. Like I feel yeah. like they started getting a lot more relaxed. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on Disney Plus. Honestly, a little too yeah, much. Like, I think once they did the Hulu merge, I think yeah, that's, yeah. that's when they really were like, oh, yeah. Right. So I was like the Fox, you know what I'm saying? Like all the Fox stuff. Like they dropped the B word in this episode. Yeah, yeah, bro. They got Legion on there. You know what I mean? Like they got all kind of weird stuff on there. So, so I also enjoyed this episode. Um, I'm glad that they turned up the dial for like actual like witch shit now that Agatha's herself. Yeah. Like I'm I'm glad that they turned things up a little bit. That's what I needed to be like, okay, I let's let's go. Mm -hmm. Uh because that's what I wanted. Again, I wanted this to lean more stylistically American horror story than uh the other two shows that I mentioned. Yeah. So cool. We open with Agatha like getting ready and the boy has like he hasn't untied himself, but he's, you know, hopping around trying to be like, hey, I, I want to help. I want to be involved. Let's let's do this. And so she's getting herself ready. And because she's like, no, I'm not going to be here when they when the seven come. Absolutely not. <laughs> like, yeah. And you can let them know that I send my regards right. uh, if you plan on staying here. So eventually he frees himself and, uh, you know, he says, take me to Witch's Road. And she's like, whatever are you talking about? And he's like, it, it, stop it. I know I have studied you. I am a fanboy. Um, <laughs> and you don't have 
your power. I have no power. That's the issue. I'm the one who broke you out this spell. But there's some shit I can't do. And the Witch's Road will get me where I need to be. So let's just let's just do that. And she's like, well, it's not that easy. We need a coven. And he was basically like, but you're the baddest. Why do you need help? It's because mm-hmm. a coven is required in order to do this. So we're going to need to find a coven. And okay, let's go find a coven. So first person they go see is the medium. And because she says that there are specific witches we need for this. So the first one is uh, somebody proficient in divination. Uh, did y'all know what divination meant? Absolutely nope. not. Okay, I knew what divination meant uh, because of my reading of the Bible. Okay. So uh, divination shows up in Leviticus. And back when I read the Bible, I was like, I need to know what that means. And basically divination just refers to somebody who uses sorcery or magic to look into the future. So mediums, psychics, like all that. And okay. Leviticus is very clear. Like that shit ain't allowed. Yeah. Like, and... I'm pretty sure that Leviticus says anybody who practices that shit should be put to death. Stoned. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I read, uh, man. yeah, I read the, the NIV and the New King James. And, yeah, the, God was very clear. <laughs> we don't do that. Yeah, thanks. Um, and Have any of y'all little... went to that? Have any of y'all had a medium read y'all? Hell I mean, no. Absolutely not. Bro, I'm black. <laughs> absolutely not. What you mean? Not Bro, because I'm I black. Know some, I know some black people who have tried it. Now, I wouldn't do oh, it, yeah. but I know some people who have. No, I'm good. I haven't. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's a hustle, yeah. at least from what I've seen. Yeah. Like, they literally just kind of use, like, behavioral techniques. And if they really are looking into the future, no thank you. Yeah, thanks. Like, yeah. I'm good. Yeah, no, I'm good on that. Uh, I've never had like a tarot card reading done or no. like, yeah, I've, yeah but I, that. if I ever needed a tarot card reading, I know some people. I I went to, uh, at work, we had a little Christmas party. I think it was a Christmas party. It was a Halloween, whatever. And one of the girls was like, hey, I can do tarot reading. Like I do with the cards and stuff. She had like some poker cards or like the regular cards. She was handling out doing it. And she was like, Brandon, would you like? I was like, absolutely not. And I walked yeah. off. <laughs> and then she started reading people. She told one girl that her she was going to break up with her current boyfriend due to him doing some stuff. I was like, I could have told her that. Like, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like a lot, of, it's not news. Like yeah, like I could have. Like, he was a football player. Like I could have told her that. But like you know what I'm saying. But I was just like, nah, I ain't playing with that. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember her doing those readings, and yeah, yeah I was like, mm, good. Yeah, no oh, thanks. I don't, I don't need it. Yeah. But, mm. um, so yeah, that's that's why I know what divination meant. Okay. And so I figured they were going to go see a psychic or a medium or somebody with a crystal ball or, you know, some shit. So they go see uh, Patty Lapone, uh, and I like Patty Lapone, but <laughs> she's, uh, you know, she she's hustling yeah. at first, you know, and... You know, they were basically playing each other because, you know, she went in there like, oh, this is my son and my husband just died and I need a reading. <laughs> and so, you know, she does. She gives her some old BS like, hey, uh, how are we? How 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 are we paying for this? Yeah. First, Gotta like, clear that up. Yeah. Yep. First, first yeah, I'm going to need I'm going to need a uh, I'm going to need that charge to go through. Number one. <laughs> yeah. And then. uh you know, after the reading and she's like, okay, this is BS. Then she starts like actually reading her, her resume. Yeah. And then she's like, oh shit, you're the real deal. Good. Let's have a real conversation now. Yeah. And so, you know, they talk about the road and she's like, absolutely not. Like all, uh, you know, ways to the road lead to death. I'm not doing that. And why would I join the covenant with you? Yeah. I know who you are. Yeah, you got the ops. You got the yeah, ops and so absolutely not. I am not doing that. Why would I do that? Yeah. And so, you know, eventually, you know, the conversation, you know, leads in her favor. And she's like, you know what? Okay, here are some, here's some names. Because I'm a seer. 
so here are the people that are going to join you. And she was like, oh, your name's on here. She's like, God damn it. Yeah. What the fuck is my name doing on there? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, meet me at the house tonight. Yeah. Um. And so, cool. Now we got to go get somebody who's proficient with potions. So now we're going to go see Jen. And, you know, also hustling. Also mm-hmm. out here, you know. Gotta get the, it, gotta get it how you can. Yeah, skin serums and potions and all that. And I think one of the questions that, I don't know if Agatha asks this or if I just thought it myself, but it came up of like, how did you end up here? Like, what, how, how do you, how, how do you get to this? Like, you are a powerful witch. What are you doing, <laughs> doing this, this bullshit? And right. he's like, no, bill's got to be paid. Yeah. They don't care what your sorcery is. Yeah, See, like it, this goes. This goes back to the the conversation we had the other day about the Joker. You know, you, your Joker is your roommate. The bills got to get paid. My boy got to. You got to get a regular job there for a little bit. You don't understand. I thought about that, and let me. Hopefully, this will put that into perspective for you. A better matchup would have been Cletus Cassidy and the Joker. Mm. Okay, that's a good one. So hopefully that. Puts into perspective the kind of crazy we're dealing with with the Joker. Yeah. Um. No anyway, thanks. that's an episode that y'all can go listen to. It's called Would You Rather? <laughs> and uh, I would also like to say on the record <laughs> that <laughs> I was I was done so wrong with that reel. Jordan, man. That was messed up, bro. That I was, was perfect. Done so wrong. But, you know, it's fine. If you listen to the episode, it all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> if you only listen to the real, I'm a fucking fiend. <laughs> I was a straight so savage. Please Very listen to savage, like bro. literally the the real and then listen to 30 more seconds. Yeah. I, like, think, it's, I, I think it's like 15 more seconds. Immediately. <laughs> yeah, like again, immediately after that. It's like, mm. oh. But again, Jordan <laughs> cut it off to do me dirty. Intentionally, uh, like that's crazy. Bro, that was yeah. hilarious. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was to got a, a, a crazy amount of unnecessary questions. Yeah. <laughs> like, there were people coming at me like, you what? <laughs> <laughs> she put it in the trash can? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. So, please listen for the context. Uh-huh. Yeah, that is hilarious. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's done so wrong. Um, uh... Anyway, that was on the last episode of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, so, Jen is there, you know, selling potions and serums and stuff. And, you know, Agatha walks in and, you know, makes the other ladies leave. And they have the conversation of, like, I know exactly who you are. What are you doing? You And she talks about how she's bound in some form. I assume there will be details on what that means. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, like, I don't know what her being bound in this case means. But she refuses, of course. And then the boy is like, uh, name a bitch badder than <laughs> Agatha. I'll wait. Mm. <laughs> so it's like, your, your PR team's pretty good. Yeah. So then, <laughs> um, the boy convinces her to join, and they go to the mall. And they're like, I need a blood witch. And mm-hmm. I assume a blood witch... The way I use the word blood witch is somebody who can blood bend. Like, somebody who can do blood magic. I think we shit. talked about that with... Was that with... Uh, not the boys. The boys spin off? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Gen V. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I called her a blood witch because yeah. she could... She had the power to manipulate blood. Yeah. That's what a blood witch means to me. Um, in this case, I guess a blood witch refers to somebody who's born from a witch, but mm. may or may not actually be a witch themselves. Got it. Okay. But I'm like, then I. It's, so how is somebody a witch if right? The, the, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But whatever. That's fine. And so they go into her store and. They get her fired, which is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And she's like, hell no, I'm not helping you. <laughs> now, one of the things that does happen 
Um, Agatha introduces the boy as her familiar. Now, is that a term y'all are familiar with? I am. I am not, actually. Okay. Is it like fam? Or like I'm aware of this person? Or I'm... That's, that's my fam. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the way that I understand familiar, which again, the Bible, Leviticus, um, because this was another one, like, if you are familiar, if you had uh, dead, stoned, we don't do that here. Mm. Uh, God was very clear. Um, the way that I understand familiars is usually an animal sidekick for a witch. Ew. So, using Sabrina the Teenage Witch, uh, Salem the black oh, cat. The little cat. Oh, actually, yeah, like uh, he yeah, is yeah, an yeah. example of a familiar. Got it. So, I usually, or at least my understanding of familiars is usually they are animal sidekicks of witches and sorcerers. Got it. Uh, Jordan. Uh, okay. So, whenever she called him her familiar, I was like, that's interesting and i don't know if that i think she's just saying stuff and that that's what i was going to say is like i don't know if that's true or if if she's just talking what if he's a animal okay what does i'm saying like we we don't know we don't know yeah i don't think he is i think i think she knows i think she has a feeling of who he might be but she doesn't know the full story yet and let's let's talk about it yeah so Whenever he talks about himself, there's like a spell that happens. So do we think that the spell doesn't allow Agatha specifically to hear what he's saying? Or do we think that the spell doesn't allow him to let anybody hear what he's saying? Because we've only seen... We've only seen him talk to Agatha, and we've only seen her not be able to hear him. I, so, I bet it's everybody. I think he. I think he might be somebody really good, like powerful. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Somebody's pulling the strings to where because he can be exposed. Because yeah, like whenever he said, "Oh, my name is," yeah, yeah, I was like, "That's some Mephisto shit." Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like that. Uh, that's that was my immediate thought. Like, because whatever, all like them, all the Mephisto stuff. Bro, again. Because again, whenever. <laughs> Whenever shit was over his mouth when he said it, yeah, that's what I was like. Oh, that's some Mephisto shit. That's who he would do that. Yeah, if we're being honest. He would. And so, and I, I, and I mean, honestly, I'm just thinking big picture MCU wise. If you're gonna do Mephisto, so like this is the show to do it only because you have a unknown protagonist. And then you could bring in Mephisto to where bring eyeballs to the show, you know. Because again, Mephisto is one of the more popular villains out there, just because he's crazy and he's not your normal villain. Like he will, he will cut a deal with anybody. So, I also when when she mentioned that there's still one more person that need to get, and was drawn to a Black Heart, I automatically thought about the character from Marvel, Black Heart, that always is with Mephisto. So, and if that's who I immediately start to get of, but I guess that's not who it was. So I thought that it was referring to Vidal because in episode one, she says that she has a black heart. I'm pretty sure. Mm, okay. Like I, I think I remember her saying that she had a black heart or something to that effect. So I thought that she was the fifth one that gotcha. was supposed to be there, but. Uh, you know, Ag- and Agatha knew that, and Agatha doesn't like the t- like Agatha didn't want because Agatha. It looked like Agatha knew there was a fifth name on there and was actively avoiding it. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I thought that the fifth person was supposed to be Vidal. Gotcha. Because I feel like Vidal references her own heart being black in episode one whenever they were fighting. She did because didn't she say like only care about you or something like that or only something like that I think. like i don't remember the wording i should have written it in my notes yeah but that was like before she so lifted her hand i had to look up yeah. blackheart because like only other reference i have of blackheart is from marvel vs. capcom 2 blackheart is the son of mephisto mm, okay but i don't know if that was what they were trying to hint at when they said blackheart but i don't know 
Okay. Yeah. I feel like it'll be a few of those like like soft handed hints of yeah. Mephisto. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm real curious to see who the boy is though. Uh what did the internet say or do you want to say? The thing I saw a quick picture, like a you know, it's you scroll across and it said it's going it could be Wiccan, which we already saw Wiccan in uh Wanda. So that's that's one of Wanda's sons, right? Yeah, we saw him in WandaVision. Wiccan is Billy, right? Maybe I don't, I, don't, I don't remember the names. I feel like there's Billy and Tommy, and I, I feel yeah. like Wiccan is Billy. Gotcha. And they said, and they was just saying like that could have been him. That's who they were leaning towards. But I didn't click on the actual article because I wasn't trying to spoil myself. But that's who they said it was. So okay. I don't know. I'm sure I probably could have looked in. I don't know. I, I'm sure you probably could look at the credits to see who his character is named. But I was like, I'm good. I assumed he was just named Teen. Yeah, but because that's what she kept calling him. Uh, I mean, I don't know, but because in the show, the credits it just had like names. It didn't have like this person as this person. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, at least I don't. I didn't uh look at the like black credits, but the color credits had uh just Catherine Hahn, uh whatever that dude's name is, Patty Lapone, Sashir, and so yeah. I feel like they MCU is pretty good about knowing that people check that stuff out. So they kind of keep it low key. I would assume, but you know, also people go out of their way to spoil and expose and yada yada. Yeah, but um, they are. Yeah, he is. Uh, I'm wondering if the spell is for Agatha or if the spell is across the board. Yeah, and. I'm assuming we'll find that out because he's with them on the road. And mm-hmm. so yeah. I assume there's going to be some communication. And so I, they're probably all just going to come up with a name for him if he can't tell them what his name is. And it sounds like he doesn't know that the spell is on him because he's just talking. Like, he's just like, yeah. oh, yeah, my name is this. This is where yeah, I grew up. This is my history. Yeah. yeah, like he's just going. And so he's not aware that she can't take it in. Yeah, that's why it feels like a bigger, a bigger fish. Yeah, like it. somebody put a spell on him yeah. to not be able to reveal himself, right? Or if he is in fact, um, can... if he is in fact uh, Wanda's son, then he doesn't have a history because he was just conjured out of nothing. Like he was just conjured from a reality stone, and so if he doesn't have a history then that could be why we're here if it is in fact her son but he's got a life and a boyfriend and a job and all that and you know i'm kind of wondering if he'll have parents or you know like i i don't know like i'm wondering if we'll see any more from him or his life but i would assume we will because they brought up the fact that he has a life yeah but also the fact that he's not able to talk about it or the fact that he's not able to reveal it, uh, who knows? I wanna, there, there are a lot of questions. I want to ask, all right, out of one through ten, like, what do you think is the chances we see Wanda in this show? Not a flashback, just like a straight-up Wanda like, here? Uh, flashbacks count. Oh, Okay. Flashbacks count seven or eight. Mm, like okay. I, I, I feel like I would be surprised if Elizabeth Olsen's face is not anywhere. Okay. Like if we just don't see her at all. I don't know what the budget for the show is and all that. Um, but I would be like again based on the nature of the show, mm-hmm. I would be surprised if like she's just absent. Yeah. I give it like I give it like a six. I don't yeah. think there's a huge chance we'll see her, but I think we still could. I think I'm assuming like a five, just because I think we might just like the 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 corn uh, with the corner and all that. Like at the at the like you, nothing directly. You're not gonna see her face, but like hints at her residue, as they say. Yeah. Uh, but I yeah, like you Spencer said, I don't know budget wise they can make that work, um, and it might. Confuse the main 
MCU movie canon people, but it, flashback would be kind of nice. But if uh, that's that's the only thing is like she's supposed to truly be dead. Yeah. Also, and... also we couldn't do. It. How could we see a flashback? She didn't. She wasn't the Scarlet Witch until she became the Scarlet Witch. Right. I I mean, if we see a flashback, it could be from that when it could be from when uh, Agatha had the spell put on her. Yeah. Or oh, from okay. their fight when they're fighting the air or whatever. Okay, gotcha. All right. Because uh, otherwise, we probably wouldn't see a flashback. Yeah. So yeah, I'll say I think six feels more correct. Okay. Because they didn't interact for very long. Yeah, they did. And like the only reason they interacted is because Agatha was drawn to the darkness that Wanda was putting out. Yeah. And she was like, oh, the Scarlet Witch, I'm going to need that. Yeah. But um, they head back to the house and everybody shows up. And then um, <laughs> their, the conversation between... Uh, Patty and Jen was hilarious. <laughs> uh, with the high priestess. Yeah. Hello, uh, divination. Hello, <laughs> potions. It's like, <laughs> you need something for your pores. Like, oh, all right. Didn't Tough. need to do it like that. Yeah, but off the top. Whatever. <laughs> um, so then uh, Jen is like, uh, where's the earth witch? And Agatha was like, well, "What do you mean? We don't. We don't need an Earth Witch." She's like, "No, no, we, it's in the song. We, we, we have to have an Earth Witch. What do you, what do you mean?" And that's when uh, it's like, "Hey, there was a fifth name on there because the, earlier the boy was like, hey, there's a fifth name on here,' and she just eats the paper." Yeah. And that's when he's like, "Hey, what was the fifth name?" She's like, "I don't know. It was just a black heart," and we all came to very different conclusions with that. Yeah. And then she goes across the street and she's like, hey, Sharon. And th- that interaction was also hilarious to me because Sharon was really just trying to be friendly and being like, you know, that my old name under Wanda was this, but my actual name. And uh, Agatha was like, shut the fuck up. Are you coming or not? <laughs> I don't care about none of that. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to hear any of that. Like, come over. And... So they go downstairs and they start singing. While that's going on, the Salem Seven show up, and that shit was weird, but yeah. I loved it. Because whenever it was just one, and then they just like split into seven, I was like, "Oh shit!" The black yeah. dude was like, "Do you see that?" Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, because he and he he was uh, yeah, that was great. He was like, "Uh, what's that?" And then yeah, yeah whenever they split, he was like, "Nope, <laughs> absolutely not." That was the correct response, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and so we see them show up and the boy is like, oh shit, there's no front door. I've got to do something. So he starts, you know, trying to block them from entering the house. And yeah, the way that they move is like weird and sped up. And, and I was like, yeah, that's just weird. And I and I like it. I'm here for it. Yeah. I, I'm glad that they're doing shit that's like, ooh, that's that's weird and uncomfortable. That's what that's what we need. They up the budget for this episode, for sure. Yeah. And so the whole time they're the, the singing is happening. And uh Sharon is like, Am I supposed to know this song? Like I don't <laughs> I don't I don't I don't I don't know the harmonies. By the end she's like kind of humming and singing a little bit. Oh she yeah, she figured it out. <laughs> um and I knew there was going to be some, whenever I saw Patty Lapone, I was there's going to be some singing. I yeah. I know that, uh, but he's trying to really just stop them from getting in the house. Like he's he's doing his job. He's like mm-hmm. I'm trying to protect uh, the women downstairs. And so whenever nothing happens, I was like, well, of course nothing happened because one of you is not a witch. Mm. And then. Uh, you know, she started going to plan B, trying to get them to attack her, and they realize what's happening. Because I was thinking, like, because I guess her power is, like, if she's attacked, then she can then steal that power. Which mm-hmm. she mentions to... Uh, I wonder if she's telling the whole truth about that, though. 
maybe it looked like that's what she was trying to do but also if she doesn't have powers currently then would she end up stealing the power because i thought wanda took everything from you so like you don't even have your power draining power oh but, yeah but i don't know like maybe she does maybe that's she figured like i can get somebody's power and you know make this thing happen yeah but i don't know but yeah she started talking that shit <laughs> Okay, she start, yeah, she started going in on them and they started sparkling a little bit and then they were like, no, don't fall for it. Uh, you know, she's trying to trick us and then a door appears. Mm. Like, I wasn't here a second ago. Right. I was like, oh, okay. Cool. Um, and then uh the boy came downstairs and was like, Oh, a way out. Let's go. Cause I'm not they're they're in the house. Right. Because uh Let's whenever Whenever that thing reached through the window, it was trying to grab him and hold him. And yeah. like, no, no not doing that. Whenever that thing crawled down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was creepy. I didn't like it. Yeah, bro. It's different, man. But also, that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. I would definitely say that the show is a little bit different from any other kind of property thing we've seen so far, which I do give Marvel kudos for that. They like trying stuff out. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate that, though. Yeah, like they're they're really stepping into the horror, uh, Halloween. Yeah, I witchy think she think demons Marvel, and yeah. I was thinking about this the other day. I think Marvel needs to go ahead and take a crack at a western because they have the character Two Gun Kid, and I feel like that could be one of the ones where they like do whatever they want to with the character because he doesn't have a like a rich history, mm-hmm. and so if they want to like try to do a western type movie. I think that they they got a character right there they could use. We have Logan. I don't need another western. That was I, Sony, that was Sony though. Yeah, I, I'm always down. Western's one of my favorite genres, so I'm down for Western. You just gotta, you just gotta give us a character that that works. I mean, I think they could do just like they did with, just like DC did with Peacemaker. Like, you already have a character; he doesn't have a crazy <laughs> backstory. You can literally do whatever you want to with him. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um, so a door appears and. It's time to go in the door. Because they were like, yeah, mm-hmm. that wasn't here a second ago. So they all go down the door, and it's just like a winding staircase. And whenever she closes the door, the door disappears. So she can't go back through the door. Mm-hmm. And so they hit the staircase. They get down there, and they see the ruid. And so they all take their shoes off. And get the get the crib walking. What do <laughs> what do what do y'all rate these two episodes? Mm. Solid seven. Yeah, seven and a seven and a half. Maybe I I say seven and a half. Yeah, exactly. which is good. Which is and Marvel yep. Television is pretty good. I agree, and it gives me hopes that the show will be good like i'm i'm under the impression that it's going to be a good show now i have been tricked before uh we have seen first episodes that are nothing like the rest uh we've 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 played that game so i'm not gonna say that i just have high hopes but i am gonna say if the rest of the show is flavored the same way as that second episode was then it should be at least pretty good I agree. I mean, we saw with Moon Knight gave us a good episode one, and the rest was made. Or we saw with Miss Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel was the was the most egregious. Yeah, yeah like great episode one, and then it just kind of took a different just, turn. Yeah, rest fell off a cliff. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm hoping this can be more like, like, you know, Hawkeye. You know, what I mean? like show that's like a consistent all the way across. No matter what yes. the level of quality, just it's consistent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Like again, if it stays at least this good, then I right. will be happy walking out. Same, same. Yeah. So, yeah. Jordan, what do you think? Anna. What was you oh, gonna Brandon, say, Brandon? Go ahead. Yeah. Oh no, I was just gonna say like, I feel like they can take more risk with this character since there isn't a ton of comic lore to 
to like they're restricted to, they can kind of just take random chances with this person. And it, it feels like they're not looking at the comics really at all. No, for her. they're not because Agba yeah. actually does. She kind of have a lot of she kind of yeah. has a lot of history, but I don't think they're looking at it at all. Because yeah. yeah, like in like she's much older and she's not a villain. Yeah, exactly. As far as I understand, so yeah, like they they've taken her in a very different direction, and so they may take some tiny comic references, but I don't think they are using the comic book as a base for her. No, yeah, I, I think they. I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's one of those. We have a great actor. Let's just build her on whatever she can do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, sometimes that's for the best. No, it's facts. It's happened. It's worked before. So yeah, I'm so far. I'm happy with it. Uh, yeah. I I believe in Catherine Hahn. Like I'm I'm not worried about her one bit. Same. Like I was not interested in Tony Stark's character for the most part until Robert Downey Jr. became. I mean, you know what I mean? So yeah, so that formula has worked for them before. So hopefully it works, works here. Um, but yeah, pretty okay. good to start so far. So would you say that scale of one to 10, you looking forward to this is about that same seven, 7.5. I would say so for me. Yeah. Yeah. I was low coming into this. I'll be honest. I was at like a four. I mean, like, like expectations, my level of care, uh, interest in it, but now, yes, yeah, seven for sure. I'd say the same. Like I, this is one of those like, oh, watching this is going to be a chore. Yeah. Um, but now I'm like, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna want to watch it. Yeah, like I'm gonna look forward to seeing that new episode. You know what I mean on Disney Plus. The only thing I am worried about though is typically. Middle episodes are the ones that aren't good when episodes aren't good. Sure. What is how many? Eight? It's it's nine episodes. Uh, okay, and eight and nine will come out on the same day, so it'll be one and two, uh, and then one until eight and nine. Okay, so that's the only thing is like w- this was good, but they're we need to be prepared for like a lull. Oh yeah, for sure. If they can get to episode like six, seven without having like a filler episode, they're, they're in good shape. Yeah. In good shape. So I, I'd say, yeah, like my excitement is a seven just because I feel like the finale should be good, mm-hmm. but getting there may be a little rough. Yeah. Probably but also I mean. like, there's no way to predict anything because again, we've seen, just about everything happened. We've seen a show start slow and get really good. We've seen a show start high and be trash. Yep. Uh, we've yeah. So I think that it is safe to still not have expectations. Oh yeah, absolutely. I agree. All right. Jim, what do you think? I I mean I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I didn't have high expectations. I'm curious to see what they do. And I'm gonna see how dark they get because I might have to, you know, stop the episodes a couple times and watch a couple funny movies and then come back to it. <laughs> so we'll see how they do. Yeah. Okay. Like anything else? That's it. I don't think I have anything else. Yeah. So hopefully people let us know what they think about the first two episodes of Agatha all along. And we've already told you where you can find us at. So let us know. And with that being said, we're never duplicated. Always appreciate it. And forever melanated.